is the icing on the cake. Because again, it's just a lack of self-awareness, a lack of accountability, um, victim complex in the most insane way possible that I could ever kind of imagine. And this features Brian Callan and um, Sam Tripoli on their podcast, Conspiracy Social Club, worst name in the world, but still we continue. And maybe is it worse than Random Show? Or is it up there, Random Show? I don't know. What's worse? Conspiracy Social Club name or Random Show? I don't know. But anyway... Um, uh, exactly, Kabi said, yes, it keeps you from experiencing things present, you're just experiencing things on Jay, exactly, exactly. Um, so, this scene here, or this little clip taken from the final kids subreddit, infuriated me to no end because it just, it just shows the lack of understanding to the severity of what the accusations were acceptance of any of any responsibility that he had in it. it just it's just infuriating so they're talking here and then this topic comes up or i don't know brian's kind of you know spitting ever on this topic concerning him being disappointed or feeling let down that people in the comedy community didn't kind of back him up or weren't there for him when he was going through his cancellation process right when he was going through accusations of him r-wording somebody assaulting somebody or whatever it may be and he felt let down by it and for me i just think it's absolutely insane that he should say this but let's hear what he has to say in his own words but bum me out, Sam, about like this community called the comic community oh. and Hollywood. What really bummed me out, and you are such an exception, and I'll always be indebted to you, is how, um, and, and by the way, I have a lot of friends I've known for very, very many years, and all of whom are in this business. And, you know, I went through a bit of a crisis, and none of them were there for me. And none of them are still there for me in any way, in any capacity whatsoever. And I was... I was kind of like the biggest letdown was realizing that I don't have any friends that I don't have. You're my friend. I have a friend, but I'm saying you're really rare. But for the most part, there are people I've known for so fucking long that yeah. I can't depend on even a little bit. You know why this is insane? Do you know why this is insane? It wasn't like he was in, it wasn't like he was accused of like embezzling some funds at the comedy store. It wasn't like he was accused of stealing a joke. It wasn't like he was accused of embellishing a story in a comedy special. Again, his fucking feet in those sandals. I fucking hate it. It's such a disrespectful thing to do on a podcast. It drives me crazy. Why, If you can put on trousers, why can't you put on fucking shoes when you're doing a podcast? I don't understand this. It's so infuriating to me. Like... Oh, and they're fucking awful pot fucking sandals too. They look like they've been made from some woman on fucking Etsy or something. But anyway, let's move on. He was accused of fucking rape. He was accused of sexual assault and sexual harassment. Let me tell you this now clearly and plainly, my friends here on this, on this podcast. If somebody comes at me and accuses me of rape or sexual assault or sexual harassment, you're allowed to not back me up. I'm a, I'm, I should expect you to all run away. Unless I kind of explain myself or I give some sort of rationale that makes sense or I may be I am able to prove that the story is incorrect or not true. If an accusation comes against my name that I raped somebody or that I have sexual assault with somebody, you have every right to not watch my streams, not pick up my phone calls, not text me back. Bro, you've been accused of rape. We work in Hollywood. This is a... Um, it this Hollywood is kind of like um you're only as successful as your closest friend kind of thing, right? It's all about your network and about who you're friends with. Look at fucking Brendan Schaub's career. He wouldn't be who he was now if he wasn't for Brendan for Brian Callen and for Joe Rogan. So clearly relationships and who you're close to and your associations matter a lot. If somebody next to you has an R word charge next to them, a rape charge next to them, or a rape accusation next to them, it's going to hurt your brand. And if it hurts your brand, it's going to hurt your ability for you to support your family, to be able to put your kids through private school, to pay for your fancy holidays, to go fucking, to make sure your wife can buy designer handbags, to pay for your car note. These are all things you have to, real life things you have to kind of run through your head and kind of deliberate on. The fact that you're able to share some ha-ha hee-hees with fucking Brian Callen after the comedy store, in the green room, in the parking lot, at a fucking Wendy's back in the day, that shouldn't distract you from the idea of maybe you should not come out and defend him. Maybe you should not pick up his cause because you want to make sure you can pay the rent and pay the mortgage at the end of the month. That should be your main the main forefront of your head especially if you're the man of the house especially if the main breadwinner that's what you should be thinking about not should i protect my comedy friend or my comedy community member because you don't know the guy for all you know the accusations could be true to this day to this day again 
accusations are what they are. I'm not a fan of cancel culture. But to this day, this man has still not given a clear explanation or rationale or reasoning as to why those women would say what they say or a counter argument. He hasn't said a word. He just said, I didn't do it. But he didn't provide any reads. They, the, those women fucking went on Los Angeles Times with that r- reporter and fucking did a whole story and article that was corroborated by friends who said they remember what they texted them about it and they mentioned it. There was, I remember the actual, I'll, I'll read the article later, but the the most um, egregious story, I think for him, the worrying one, wasn't the one where the woman said he raped him. The one that was really worrying, that sounded really like it was him that would do something like that, was a story about him going to go buy some pants in some shop or something. And and he supposedly um, came onto the girl that was helping him, the shop assistant, and he came out or something came out of the change room wearing just underwear and basically saying, how does this look? Basically showing himself off, something along those kind of lines. And that's something that you could imagine Brian Callen doing because of how he tells his comedy about, you know, being a man and showing off his body in the physical, all that sort of stuff. That's something you can basically imagine him doing. But he doesn't. But he didn't explain why that story wasn't true. Like, explain it. He didn't explain it. Again, he doesn't owe anybody explanation. But you were accused of a pretty serious crime, bruv. Usually a crime that usually people don't ever come back from. The only reason why you come back from this is because you got this amazing job doing content creation online, which effectively inoculates you from being cancelled. Because if you're a podcaster in general, if you're a content creator or an influencer no matter what you do, you can kind of be uncancelable because your fans basically provide you with your living. It's not like an industry thing. It's not like a Hollywood thing, right? Because if you're in Hollywood, because as, as we see with Brian Callen, he's never going to be a Hollywood person again. He's never going to be on a Hollywood film. He's never going to be in a probably a network TV show again because of the accusation he got, against, got around him. The moment he gets books for a job and his name is in a variety, I have to call mad amounts of women online are going to start trashing him and saying stuff and hounding fucking production companies and he's going to get completely taken off. So they're not going to risk it. But his podcasting career didn't really suffer that much. He had to take a back seat on T5K, but he was able to pick up pretty quickly with the Conspiracy Social Club. And from what I've read online, I'm not watching their pockets and stuff, but they make some decent money on this show because I think it's all done behind a paywall and stuff. So, do you know what I mean? Like, so the, I just I just can't for the life of me understand how somebody can sit there and legitimately expect people to back him up because he's been charged, you know, accused of what he's been accused of in a similar rape charge. Like, and that's what made him question about the comedy community. If you're an adult and you're relying on a community, especially if you're plus over the age of 25, you need to keep your head a wobble anyway. Do you know what I mean? You're a bit of an idiot. If you're legitimately hoping you have a community, you're a bit of an idiot. So the fact that he sits there and thinks that that community should have stood up for him off the back of a rape charge is insane. A rape charge. A rape, sorry, not charge. Accusation. I'll take it back. Accusation or allegation. Is legitimately insane. Like, in my head, if I have a friend that gets accused of something like that, you're done until you can prove that it didn't happen. There's no, like, I'm giving you benefit of doubt. Like, there's certain things you just can't come back from. Fucking touching up kids, rape, um, anything to do with hitting women and shit, you're done. You know what I mean? You're finished. There is no, there is no nothing. There's, unless you can prove that it didn't happen, there's nothing else to come back from. So the fact that he sat there thinking he's friends in comedy who have families and wives and stuff should go there and fight for him in public is nonsense, especially, especially when you consider that he threw Crystalia under the bus immediately when it happened to him. And what Crystalia got accused of, again, I'm not trying to compare fucking nastiness, but I would much rather, I think it's much rather, you could probably come back easier from being accused of creeping on younger girls than you can be from raping somebody. You can maybe explain away the young girls thing. Like, oh, I've just got a fetish. I like young girls. I know it's not socially acceptable and it's creepy, but it's not a crime. They're illegal in certain states. It's a bit disgusting and yucky to say, but at least you can come back from that. But coming back from fucking raping somebody? Come on. And expecting people to defend you in public? Come on, brother. You didn't even defend your own friend, your best friend, when he got accused of what he got accused of. Yeah. Even in the worst day of my life, that 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 I cannot, I, I that, and you have to understand that about this business, that I, I realized that I, I had, I don't have a community. I never had a community. I never. Comedy was not a community. Comedy was the most selfish group of people acting. You didn't want to be in a community anyway, brother. This is the thing as well. This this revisionist history. I've been watching T5K from the beginning. He never wanted to be a stand-up comedian. That's the truth. He was really good at it, Brian 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 Callen. It came second nature to him. It's something that he found easy to do. 
but he never really wanted to be a comedian. He always wanted to be an actor. You know, the whole thing of like his agent telling him he's going to be the next Tom Hanks. That was all he wanted. wanted. So he kind of used comedy as a way to kind of get more acting jobs or to kind of get him to sort of increase his profile. So this idea that he was comedy, 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 community thing is tr- false. You never went to be a comedian. You went to be an actor. Hollywood, the actors, the writers, and the directors, and the comics that I know were, were the most selfish people on the planet. And that nobody really gives a fuck about anybody. It's Duh. all about them. Duh. And I don't live that way. I don't live my life that way. I never have. And to my, to my shame and to my... To my uh, what are you talking about, bro? Like, I'm not gonna. Yeah, I'm not gonna. Yeah. To, to my detriment, because it was like, I always, I think life should be about teamwork. I think we should all be there for each other. I think we should all be there to support each other. I think we should all be there to fucking really help each other, no matter what, because that's what's. Okay, Dennis Michaels. Good point. Dennis Michael says here, people lie all the time. That woman should have pressed charges or shut up, not Callan simp, but it's hearsay. Fair. What you're saying is fair. It's a bit insane, but it's fair. Let's let's kind of agree with what you're saying, right? No problem. What I'm saying is that he thinks, he feels let down that his people, comedy community people, fellow peers in the, in the comedy scene, other stand-up comedians, he feels let down that they didn't go for bat for him, that they weren't there for him when he needed them. And I'm saying in an industry like LA, where people are adverse to controversy, where having accusations or anything against your name is going to severely damage your career, where production companies cancel shows and change complete scripts and fucking lineups and cast of shows based on someone said some tweet when they was 16, all this sort of nonsense that happens there, right? This sort of aversion to any sort of blowback. How can you expect in an industry like that for people to stand up and kind of bat, go, bat, go to bat for you if you've been accused of one of the worst crimes you can be accused of? If people get cancelled for saying fucking mad shit on Twitter when they were 16 and they can't have careers anymore or whatnot, or they get held to some really high standards, whatever it may be, based on what they've done prior or whatnot, what makes him think, honestly, that people should have gone back for him for the fucking rape allegation? Come on. It's not a fucking sensible, mature way to think. It's super naive. It doesn't make any sense. Okay, she might have lied. Okay, it might have been hearsay. Okay, it's just an accusation. Okay, okay, no problem. But you can understand why a fucking, why a production company might want to say, hey, we're going to pause on this movie. You can understand why your friend who's fucking got a Netflix deal in, in development might not want to answer your calls. You should be able to understand that. And if you don't, you're a fucking idiot. So much fun is creating a real, a real fucking team, like creating a real. Again, he wears sandals on the podcast, open toes, crusty shit ones. And then he's got his phone on fucking loud with his ringtone on. This guy fucking infuriates me, man. Honestly, he fucking infuriates me. He's so infuriates. This man is nearly 60 years old. S- like three kids. He's got a new baby just now on the way. He looks after a family. Like he's been, he's worldly. He lived around the world and shit. Like what is wrong with you? Put some shoes on, put your phone on silent and fu- I- well, fucking Why you answer that? I'm, who's that? Dracula, CIA, no, that's my buddy CIA, Price. Dracula. Yeah. It's so beautiful. You were ending it. You were wrapping it up. I was wrapping it up. Phone went off. I probably was better. I was starting to ramble on the way I do. No, but, no, no. It was good. But, was... but, but I mean, it is a hard. Anyway, fuck this guy, man. You chat so much shit. And again, like I said, I don't think you should expect any of your friends to go to bat for you if you've been accused of a rape allegation unless you're able to prove it. Otherwise, I honestly think it's naive and insane to think that. And you can't think, oh, they're not my friends anymore because they want to bat me. Because, Bruv, disprove the rape allegation first, then we can talk. There's none of this like, oh, you're my friend. It didn't really happen. Like, come on, man. Come on. Come on. Let's be real. Let's be fucking real, man. Let's be real. What's the number? I agree with permissible, but I just don't think he raped that girl without any charges. <laughs> Even when R. Kelly got away with it the first time, he still got a charge. Nah, man, you can't say that, bro. The justice system is weird. You can't say because someone didn't get a charge that they didn't do it. That's an insane thing to say. I understand the benefit of the doubt and stuff. I get it. And I wouldn't, if that happened to me, I'd be pissed off if I didn't do it. I get it. But you can't say because you didn't get charged, you didn't do it. That's fucking insane. He could have done that then at that time. The world is a different place. Coming out and saying those allegations or coming out and saying those kind of things might not have been received as well as he wanted to say. Maybe she just didn't feel comfortable to say it. And if you say it after the statute's limitations has passed, it doesn't mean it didn't happen. It just means you can't have a, any kind of recourse in the kind of course. 
um, I don't know. Anyway, I, I, I don't want to get into this sort of nonsense because it's not my business and shit. Um, let's just fucking move on in it. Let's fucking move on.